biggest story of our lifetime so far happened this weekend where Tim, you you're better with the business stuff. I'm going to say it with like a smooth brain idiot way of dumbing it down, but you'll give us the details of what this UFC WWE endeavor yes. mess is all about. So endeavor is known. I'd say, you know, you're a, a hyper MMA fan, so you might chime in on these points, but endeavor mm -hmm. is the parent company of UFC. Now, mm -hmm. from what you've told me, that was smoke and mirrors. That's just fancy name for we had money, we bought it, but yet we're saying, right, like we're the parent company, you're you're doing this, but that's all like there was they're not Endeavor doing didn't do anything else, right? Right. So, yeah. Dana White still stayed in charge. The only thing that honestly changed from when uh the UFC was purchased by Endeavor is Endeavor was a very successful uh talent agency before they purchased correct. UFC. Uh, they just fired a bunch of people from the UFC that said, hey, we're not going to have redundancy here. So instead of having two yeah. promotional departments, we're just going to have one. Right. So that's really the only thing they did. By Dana the White way, still does the day to day. That's what like venture capitalists do, right? Like they 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 invest, they guarantee you like, well, you're going to see all these increased things. And they do that by going like, well, geez, you should lay off these people and you should get rid of these folks. That's how they always do it, right? All right. Yeah. So, but well, so it, it, what I'll say on that is, yes. However, it also because again, we live in a capitalistic society. It is a little silly to have redundancy where you're oh, like, sure. you know, I listen. make the graphics for UFC. Well, I make the graphics for UFC. Well, why don't you just do it for both? Okay. Yeah. Exactly. You know? No, and that all makes sense, right? Like, and, and to this point, it's, hey, Dana, you're good at the fight game. You kind of suck at running a billion dollar business. Let us handle that kind of stuff. You do that, and then we'll just work right. together, right? And and that's a great idea. So what WWE has done here <clears throat> has merged with Endeavor, and they will create a new company that is like right now has a placeholder name called like New Corp or something like that. Um, well, it's going to be trading under the name TKO, right? Because you know right. you love that. So now they will form this new company. However, like. WWE and UFC will operate as like two brands together. Yeah. You got your uh, phone on your microphone. I hear a little buzzing in the background. Oh, oh. good. Look at that. Look at Tom. Technical fixing the show as we go. But so, yes, they they formed this new company, merging WWE and, and Endeavor. However, the structure of that company will be there's this Endeavor board that oversees WWE and UFC as, as these two separate brands, right? Um, so yeah, okay. Um, they're gonna do for WWE. Interesting note that I saw was WWE uh, had more revenue than UFC. However, UFC was turning more profits than WWE. So it'd be interesting to see how some of that shakes out. I think the for me here's the the I don't know if you want to call this fun maybe, but it's it's if we go trace back to the Vince McMahon angle of this here. Mm -hmm. This guy got kicked off of his board of his company, forced to resign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, listen, media rights are coming up. I'm going to say no to all of those because I have majority shareholder power unless you put me on the company to broker a sale. He then brokered that sale to a company that created a new company that he is now the executive chairman of the board of. And but that still not board, the CEO. Not CEO, but that board now reports to him that fired him. He's man. Well, yes. <laughs> However, that, that is one way to definitely look at it. And it, it's very valuable to say that in the sense that look at what he just fucking pulled off. However, the one thing that I would say in a devil devil's advocate way is this is now the first time since Vince senior was telling him what to do that Vince has a legitimate boss and Ari Emanuel. <laughs> if you're not familiar with who Ari Emanuel is, uh, if you've ever seen the show Entourage, which is somewhat now a dated reference, but go check out the HBO show Entourage. Jeremy Piven's character is based off of Ari Emanuel. Ari Emanuel is a hothead. Ari Emanuel is ruthless. Ari Emanuel will rip your heart out and then keep your eyes open as you die. And his and your heart is in his hands and he's laughing at you as you die. I, he's yeah. that kind of person. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if Vince isn't only there for a short time. He just did well, this to like fuck everybody else over there, like do what he wanted, make his money, and then say, "Hey, you guys." So, and that's the interesting want. thing because you have Ari Emanuel, who, as I just described, ruthless billionaire, Dana White, ruthless billionaire, 
a little bit more compassion shown in the past, but still just as much of a double down, fuck you, it's my way or the highway kind of guy. Hates the media because they report facts and that's fucking bullshit. And then you got Vince McMahon, who is the probably the biggest psychopath of the three of them, right? And so those three in a room, I would guess, isn't going to last long. Um, and who's the oldest of the three? It's Vince. So that's why, yes, don't be shocked if in 2025, Vince says, hey, what a ride. This was great. I'm going to go sit on a beach for the last year of my life or whatever it is, right? Or another rape allegation comes out and they go like, hey, you should well, and that's too. But that's the thing here is so now they're a publicly traded company where he isn't the CEO. So if that shit happens this time around, he can't just do the hush money himself. This shit has yeah, to hit the Yeah, so fans. how does this work? So, Because I, I like the overall thing was like 51% of WWE shock or stockholders own the company and 49% of Endeavor. But like Vince now doesn't have this majority shareholder situation in his back. That's what I'm saying. Correct. So if Ari Emanuel says, hey, the fire is getting too hot. You got to get out of the fucking kitchen. Vince can't double down and say, fuck them. I'm going to do a promo on SmackDown. It's like, get the fuck out. You're, you're not the boss anymore. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's the we'll interesting part. Put your part stuff of it. in a box. And yeah, we'll put it waiting. in a trash bag with Mickey James's yeah. shit, and it's, you can go fucking to the back waiting door. Waiting in your Uber downstairs. Get the fuck yeah. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. That would be yes. fun, but that won't happen. I mean, hey, maybe. So there's, yeah, there's a ton of thoughts that I have. I actually took some notes. I know we don't fact check or do any checking here, but I well, did because I got. Well, let's jump well, in got, with a, a a quick tweet the table. Because yeah, let's do that before then. we get into that, this is this one's quick, and and I think we need to touch on it before we go further. Uh, Vince McMahon doing this went full '80s soap opera villain, went '40s uh, evil villain tying a, a damsel in distress to the train tracks with this mustache that he's got going on. And we got to tweet the table about it. Use hashtag tweet the table on Twitter to tell us what you think about wrestling all throughout the week. Uh, Theo75 says Vince McMahon looks silly with that mustache. Hashtag tweet the table. Silly isn't the word, is it? He looked like an audience member for the original uh, debuting song of Pennies from Heaven that MJF sang. Right? Like yeah. He looks like the guy that originally saw that song being performed. Just I weird. Mean, Just 1940s, weird. yeah, smoking. Film noir a bad detective who gets shot in the first 20 minutes. That's who, that's what he looks like. Yeah. Dick Tracy's understudy. Yeah, you're you know? right. yeah. 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 So I, yeah, like I said, I wrote down some thoughts and I know we don't fact check and we don't do a lot of prep here, but I got brain fog. So some of the shit I wanted to remember. So I didn't forget it while we were talking. So uh, Tim, if you don't mind, I'm going to share some of my thoughts bounce them off you, and then see what you think. Please here. So, do. Yeah couple things that I thought of with the combined UFC WWE deal, as you mentioned, uh, TV rights are coming up, right? And generally speaking in mergers, one company isn't going to re up their TV rights. And then the other company let it ex uh, expire. And then we have this weird kind of jigsaw way of doing television or pay-per-view, whatever it will be streaming now in, in, in a merger. So typically they're both going to wait till, Hey, we're both done. UFCs with ESPN, WWEs with Peacock and uh, Fox, right? So they're both going to wait till that's done. Here's the interesting thing. Even though the numbers still aren't there 100% and streaming services are starting to scale back as far as like, we're not just going to give money to everything because it's not really uh, quantity over quality as HBO Max is finding out with 70% of their uh, staff getting fired because of discovery mm -hmm. mergers. Um don't be shocked, however, in my eyes, if you see UFC, WWE can be combined in one app and here you go, take it or leave it, Peacocks of the world, or we'll do our own fucking shit. And now you have a streaming service where you can watch UFC 162 and SummerSlam 98, right? Yeah. So that would be, well, I'd love that. That would be great for me. <laughs> yeah. um, so don't be shocked if that happens. Now, the second thing, and I think this is the more interesting thing from a outsider's perspective looking in, and I think Jeffrey Sills said this, is, oh, when you had mentioned the profits, he says, uh, UFC makes more profits when you pay your fighters nothing. Try not paying your superstars, and let's see how many superstars they'll have left. 
That's the model for the UFC. Their heavyweight champion, arguably the most marketable fighter potentially they've ever had. This guy's name is Francis Ngannou. He hits, it was measured, at the same rate as being in a 45-mile-per-hour car wreck in a sedan. That's how hard he hits you, right? That's it, huh? And he's and he has these um, immigrant stories where he lived on the sand, he went to Paris, lived out of a car. Like, his story is a Disney movie with violence, right? And he's their heavyweight champion, and he said, I want to get paid like heavyweight champion. <laughs> Fun fact off of that, he got paid $600,000 in his last UFC uh, title fight. To give perspective, Rocky Marciano in 1951 got the same amount, Ooh. okay? Tyson Fury makes $10 million a fucking fight in boxing. So Francis Ngannou said, hey, let's uh, try to pay me a little more. And the UFC, being notoriously cheap, said, there's the fucking door. And he doesn't fight for the UFC anymore, right? So now that's when, not the Roman Reigns. I'm not interested more in the Roman Reigns' contract negotiations. I'm more interested in the Shinsuke Nakamura. Right? right? Shinsuke Nakamura's contract comes up. Hey, I'm an international star. You go do a show in Tokyo. I'm your main event. All this shit. Back in the pre-merger days, Vince might say like, well, goddamn, we'll get four Tokyo shows this year then to get Mars money's worth. Our Emmanuel might say, go fuck that guy. He ain't on our TV. Yeah. When's the last time you saw him? Right. You know, last summer. Well, he's going to say, listen, I can we've talked about this. He might say like, Hey, listen, the moves don't matter. We got tons of guys that we can get for a fourth of the price that can do those moves. And if you're not going to give me any goddamn good story, then they can just fucking go on there and do the moves themselves for a quarter of the fucking price. Right. So that's the interesting thing is all of the contract negotiation behind closed doors where these, you know, higher mid card, lower top of the card kind of guys come up. And what does Ari Emanuel say when Vince says, well, we typically give them this kind of sweetheart deal because they they did a good favor for us when Roman had COVID or whatever. And he's like, well, I don't fucking care. It's 2024 or whatever it is, right? So that's my next thought. Now, flipping over to the UFC side, because so far we've been focused on WWE. Obviously, we're a pro wrestling podcast. Um, so that's we're where pro we're wrestling's focused. best podcast. Obviously, duh. Yeah. Um, but I, I do want to go to the UFC side uh, of this merger. And obviously, you know, Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor is the highest watched or second highest watched boxing match of all time. And why is that? Because of the drama, because of the storyline. You, A boxer versus MMA, all of that stuff. A white guy versus a black guy. Outspoken guy versus outspoken guy. All champion, champion, all that shit, right? Imagine... With the production, st the production staff and talent that the WWE has to make you fucking care about a Miz John Cena WrestleMania match, like it was the greatest thing in the world, what they could do with real fucking fights, like real knockouts and real fucking, yeah. you know, hotel drama shit. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. like, I'm interested in what the stories of assuming they go over there, what they can tell that side. So you don't think the UFC invasion is happening, right? Like Roman's going to be out there one day on the mic and the UFC invasion is going to come in. No, but I tell you who's the most fucked from this. So here's yeah. my next note. Who's the most yeah. fucked from this whole entire merger? Brock Lesnar. How mm. many times did we hear in his contract negotiation? Uh, well, fuck you, Vince. If you don't like it, I'll go talk to Dana. And then when Dana was like, who will come over? And he's like, oh, you don't want to give me that extra pay-per-view yeah. bonus well fuck you i'll go back to vince well now yeah now, now you sit on the same board shit. right mm -hmm. yeah, go fuck yourself you know and he's older but yeah still you know what i mean like if you yeah, but nobody could do, do that kind of thing now right, right. exactly so um no I, I i don't think now maybe those aging gas bags in the ufc you know uh not necessarily he's not in the ufc anymore but he's in bellator however like a rampage jackson don't be shocked, right? Like people like that, I wouldn't be surprised if they show up in WWE a little bit more. Um, yeah. And I wouldn't be shocked if, if you know, Israel Adesanya, for example, is a huge pro wrestling fan. I think I showed you this a few months back where he came out to the Undertaker's yeah. song, you know? Mm -hmm. 
I don't be shocked if the next fight he has, assuming he wins this weekend, which he probably won't, but if you assuming he does, if he's in the corner of Seth Rollins when they're doing whatever to lead up to a UFC fight of his, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So currently I think with this situation now, Vince kind of is back in charge and you know, we like to discuss what we talk about or, or what we see on the TV screen. Now, however, Million this percent. is a big news item, but there's been a lot of discussion about what does that mean for creative? Is he actually back in charge of creative? And we got to tweet the table from uh, at Brian J. Bay Bay. He says, Triple H coming out with a promo like he just lost his job. Hashtag tweet the table. Uh, where do you think that kind of stuff lies? Do you think Vince oh. is back in that game? And Yeah, mm. I think not knowing anything, right? I don't know shit about Dick. Right. But I would guess Triple H is now in that Eric Bischoff, Paul Heyman role where it was that big splash of look who's running raw and look who's running SmackDown. And as soon as that, you know, number dipped just a little bit, it was, well, they're out of here. Vince is taking over mm -hmm. that I, triple H has never been on thinner ice as an outsider's perspective than he is right now. Interesting. Uh, you now, know. now he did, it, get, it got reported by the Forbes of the world that with this merger, Nick Khan got, 15 million and triple H got $5 million. So it's and not Nick, as if they didn't Nick make Collins out president of, uh, of WWE now, right. In this well, new company. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. No, I mean, look, they all made money of course, and they're going to continue to make money. Cause that's their reward for everything they do is getting money. Mm -hmm. Um, but Jeffrey still says Vince was back in charge for night two. WrestleMania happened, right? Theo earlier said, uh, happy wrestling new year. Uh, that's kind of generally the feel from wrestling fans around, right? WrestleMania, unless you have some stuff to close up on this WWE. Well, I was going to say going into WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two of the things that I made an observation of from WrestleMania that I think deals with this merger that you're going to see a lot more of. Uh, well, one is, as we mentioned already that I have written down layoffs, uh, you yeah. know, the wrestle talks and what cultures of the world that report on all these layoffs, you're going to have a fucking, video an hour for the next two weeks of 10 to 200 people getting released. Right. But the other thing that I think you're going to see a lot more of from a pro wrestling's perspective is uh, if you're interested, go Google the UFC octagon. That shit looks like NASCAR on crack with all the advertisements. And as you saw from WrestleMania turbo tax, this and cinnamon toast crunch that, that's the new uh, norm. Yeah. Not only did we see it, so did our fans, uh, the Spanish Nouns Table Nation. Uh, and we got another tweet the table, which again, follow us on Twitter at Table Show Tom. Live tweets during big events, uh, always out there making friends uh, <laughs> and, 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 you know, a few enemies. Uh, but we got one from at Justin Floor says if matches are able to be sponsored, Wrestlers should be able to have sponsors on their gear. Hashtag tweet the table. And yes, they should. However, what Tom said is going to happen. They will outfit the ring and everything else. The wrestlers, no, 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 you can't do that. No, it has to go through us first. If wrestlers are sponsored on their gear, it will be through WWE uh, or Endeavor, whatever, or whatever, New Corp, whatever we're going to call it. Like, because that's, they have all the power now, as you were discussing, right? Like the yeah, power struggle here between performer, fighter, whatever you want to call it, and company here grew a little bit wider in this. Well, and if you are going to see the sponsorships, it's not going to be, uh, you know, wrestler driven. It's going to be, you're putting what on my gear? We're putting this beef jerky exactly. shit on, you know, it, they ain't exactly. going to be the ones making the decision, but no, you might see exactly. sponsorship on their stuff. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like some, yeah. some guy's going to come out in a biker gimmick, but he has going to say Skittles on the back of his ass. Yeah, or he's going to be the Harley Davidson Rider of the Week, and he's going to oh come out, and, 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 and they're going to have a feud between a Harley guy and a Kawasaki guy, and that's the whole fucking three-month feud is what bike is better. I'm the better motorcyclist than you are. Hey, Tom, I think you, I think you hit it right there. They're going to start doing that. We discussed how – I said, man, it looked like you guys were trying to go into this like pro wrestling with the stars kind of motif – and that leans just kind of right in what you're talking about. Like, hey, we can set up these storylines to be commercials for you if you mm -hmm. sponsor this match and give us 
five billion dollars, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. God. I mean, just go back to WrestleMania. Oh Christ, what one was it? Yep. The WrestleMania that Booker T wrestled Edge. If you remember how that fucking started, it was over a fake shampoo conditioner ad. Remember? Booker T had it. Edge yes. stole it from him. It was this international. We didn't really have a fucking thing. That's going to be real now. It's going to be the head and shoulders battle of the locks between, you know, Seth Rollins and AJ Styles. And the, the loser has match. to shave yeah. their head. Yeah. That's what BOP says the ring mat will have flaming hot Cheetos printed on it. Yep. That's going to happen. Like I said, you might have a fucking sponsorship just. Well, you know how the uh, the ring apron is now a screen anyway. They're just going to have a rolling. Yep. It's going to look like a goddamn baseball outfield just constantly rolling. <laughs> yeah, it's going to look like a NASCAR race, except yeah. that they're not cars. They're just advertisements. It's like legitimately yep. advertisements. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be bullshit. Yep. They're going to so, yeah, have record profits. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Record profits. <laughs> record profits. Good for you. And that's the other thing, too. That's, uh, you know, I've said this before in episodes long ago. But I always hate when people are like, you know, a big time fight, right? Like going back to that Conor McGregor, um, uh, Floyd Mayweather fight when they're like, do you know how much money they're going to make? And it's like, it's yours. Yeah, it's your money. (laughs) It's your fucking money. You don't have to support any of the shit. And like, I don't, that doesn't make me want to watch something because they're going to make a bunch of money doing it. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Let them be short sighted and go for the quick money grab and have, you know, PF Chang's uh, racist wrestler of the month and you don't fucking watch it. And then it was just the easiest, like to spot, like fake fight. <laughs> they just didn't even care to pretend it was real for uh, yep. yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next sponsored tag team match, the Marlboro man and Harley Davidson versus skull man and Kawasaki biker dude says Theo P in the right chat. there. Right there right on the there. YouTube chat. You should be following us on the YouTube as well. We are youtube.com slash Spanish Announce Tube. Or if you just search in the YouTube, you can find us at Spanish Announce Table Podcast. Tom, 